Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor, and today we're doing something a little different. So today I want to do a commentary style video where basically we look at a broad subject, break it down into some pieces, and learn a little bit. This is one of my favorite styles of videos to watch on YouTube actually. I was inspired to talk about this topic due to my coworker Stephanie who told me to watch this documentary called Unnatural Selection. So if you want more information on this, I would start there just because it's very straightforward. Now that that is over with, what is biohacking? Biohacking is basically DIY biology. It is the biotechnical social movement in which individuals and small organizers study biology using the same traditional methods that are used in basic institutions. Basically, when we say DIY biology, these are people who have very little or no biological or scientific background. These are people who are kind of like the up-and-coming Einsteins, people experimenting in their garages. Now, biohacking kind of rides that fine line between biohacking and gene therapy, which we will get into towards the end. So what are some examples of biohacking? We have a few different people who are doing this. There's Dave Asprey, who is trying to live to 180 years old by injecting himself. There is a man by the name of Zoltan Istvan. I hope I said that right. He actually surgically implanted a chip into his hand that then continues to unlock doors. There is David Ishi, who is a dog breeder who is actually trying to genetically implant jellyfish glow genes into dogs to get glow-in-the-dark dogs. And then there's Dr. Josiah Zayner, and he is doing gene like biohacking on muscle growth and he does this on himself and also on frogs. So basically biohacking is in simple terms genetic engineering. Genetic engineering is definitely a newer thing. I definitely wanna make a video on this topic on like genetically modified food and whatnot because that's really interesting. So this science is essentially genetic engineering on any human organism or living being and they use a protein called CRISPR. CRISPR was discovered somewhat recently. It is a protein that is able to actually go in, find exactly what DNA strand needs to be edited, cut out that exact genome, whether it's affected, unhealthy, or what have you, and then place in either a new genome or a healthy genome. That is basically what CRISPR does. CRISPR is a family of DNA sequences that is found in the genome of bacterias. When scientists discovered this, there was a lot to be concerned about just because of how advanced that the science makes us today. It was founded by a bunch of different scientists. I guess their lead scientist or who really brought this forward to the United Nations and other governing bodies was Jennifer Doudna. So she was one of the head scientists that actually helped pioneer and find CRISPR. What this discovery of CRISPR was is that it works in every organism. So what this means is we can edit people, we can edit bugs, rats, any mammal, any insect, any organism that can reproduce on its own or not, plants, we can change anything with this one enzyme. It's crazy. Let's reel it back a little bit. This technology can kind of seem a little scary if you don't exactly know what to expect from it. We don't know whose hands this is going in or how it is being regulated or if it's being regulated, which right now it currently isn't. There's a ton of different applications that this science can be used for, obviously. With what we discussed earlier with the biohacking is there's that. You could obviously change anything about you or we can even use this to do gene therapies. Now, this is where things might start to get a little confusing for some people. Now, biohacking and gene therapy are not the same thing. Biohacking is taking CRISPR and enhancing yourself. So it's basically taking the healthy genome and making it better than it already is. So like, let's say this is the top line, this is the best. It is now going above that top line to be better. Now that's what we would consider an enhancement. So when it comes to gene therapies, what that involves is it goes in and either replaces a damaged or missing genome or it goes in and edits out and changes it. 
The global gene therapy market is expected to grow significantly from 215 million US dollars in 2017 to 558.7 million dollars at the end of 2024 at an exponential rate of 14.6 percent between 2018 and 2024. There's a ton of new different types of gene therapies and this is obviously a new way of medicine for us. Now the issue with it is because it's so new and the access is so limited and the cost is so high is that a lot of people don't like this being a gene therapy because it's not accessible for people and it's not available for everybody. It seems like it's only going to be available for the rich, the wealthy, those who can afford it or who should afford it, not everybody. Now that can be a problem later down the line. Obviously as more and more are becoming common, they will hopefully eventually lower down the cost and hopefully we don't see something like how we see with insulin today. Which is interesting because in the documentary I watched, it turns out the people who created insulin only sold the original patent for insulin for one dollar each. The fact that the people who created that drug knew that accessibility needs to be a thing and that cost is not going to make something more accessible, that's important. What is gene therapy? So gene therapy can either involve CRISPR or it can involve putting the healthy gene into where it belongs. These gene therapies, they exist to fix a problem. They're not here to make something more better than it already is. That's not a word. In the documentary I watched, there was three different types of gene therapies specifically they were looking at. One of the gene therapies that they talked about in the documentary that I watched was Spinraza. So that is a spinal injection that helps treat SMA, which is spinal muscular atrophy. This is commonly able to definitely help younger kids who are born with this disability. Another gene therapy that that documentary had highlighted was Lux Turna, which is an injection into the eye which puts the healthy RPE65 gene back into where it belongs. So basically people who have that gene disability, they are born without that gene entirely or it is a faulty gene. So when this injection goes back in, it replaces that gene and fixes your eyesight. Another gene therapy that they looked at but was definitely not approved like how Spinraza or Luxturna was, was an N6 gene injection. So what this involves is N6 antibody, which is an antibody to HIV. This is supposed to help cure HIV and AIDS, but the thing is, is because it's such a newer gene therapy and the HIV is a living disease, it will change over time and get adjusted to things, so it's going to be a bit longer on that one. So all these things are wonderful, but what is there to be worried about? There is a few things to be worried about when it comes to this science of gene technology. One thing for sure is consent. Consent is a huge issue because a lot of these things that are being genetically engineered are not even getting the right to say whether or not they want to be genetically engineered. Now, this can be seen more commonly in the idea of designer babies. So basically, designer babies is, it's a very controversial topic because a lot of people can see how that can go very Hitler-esque with the very specific, I want my kid to have blonde hair, blue eyes, or brown hair, brown eyes, or there's a lot, and it's a lot of deciding for your child of what they look like when, to begin with, in human nature, that is not how anything works to begin with. You don't choose what you look like, you are born the way you look. The only time you get to choose what you look like is if you get surgery. <laughs> this can be also problematic because with this gene editing, we can also potentially edit the genius of a child and make somebody smarter. And this would be very, very unfair in a world that is already as unfair as it is. It definitely crosses the line of enhancement where we can see this becoming a problem. Another issue with this new gene editing capabilities is that there's also a new science called gene drives. I definitely want to make a video more in depth on this because it is really, really interesting how they do this. So what a gene drive is, is they basically take one specific gene and drive it through an entire population of anything. There's a few examples of this in the documentary that I watched. They were looking at rats and mosquitoes. So there's a rat problem in New Zealand where because of climate change, they basically have gotten royally screwed with the rat 
reproduction rate because it's been a lot warmer there they've been able to live a lot longer and reproduce even more now what the gene drive wanted to do was create a, a lethal gene that eventually will kill out all of the rats in New Zealand that's a great thing if you want pest control but the issue at hand is that when these people came and inhabited New Zealand, they brought the rats with them and it ate all of the seabirds. So now their environment is already broken and now adding in yet another thing could make it even worse. The number one concern with gene drive is definitely the environmental impact it has on the population and on the area around the population. Also, with the gene drive with mosquitoes, they're looking to find a way to inject these mosquitoes with a anti-malaria gene. So basically, it kills the malaria and it will not carry the, ma the malaria down the generations of mosquitoes. So it would essentially stop malaria. It's an amazing thing to be able to do and stop, but at the rate and way that we're doing it, I'm not sure if it's ethically the right way. With the creation of this science, I can see this being a huge issue um, ethically and morally for many people and scientists. It is so crazy like to think about like people are growing different organs at different parts of their bodies. So in the documentary that I watched, they also, there's like a quick clip at a biohacking convention and you could see a person had created and grew an ear out of their forearm which is <sighs> why you can't hear out of it i'm not sure how exactly i feel about this science i think it can definitely be a helpful thing and it can also be a really really bad thing too. I watched this documentary with my boyfriend and Mark definitely had many words to say. He thought it was the worst scientific discovery that we have found and this is how we get zombies. So thanks Mark for your opinion. <laughs> I just think it's crazy to think about how we're able to just completely alter some like a person let alone an organism like it is just so crazy. Especially with the designer baby thing. I just don't understand how people would morally be okay with deciding what their child looks like. And like, especially if like your child found out that they didn't even, like they weren't, like it's literally test tube babies. And it's not like a bad thing. Like they're three parent children. Like they take one, like a mitochondrial thing from one mother. And then you take all the chromosomes from the biological parents, put it all together and then designer baby better baby than stock baby oh my god stock baby could you imagine there's like a designer baby and a stock baby oh my god. i'm definitely not sure on exactly how i feel about this new science i think it's definitely helpful in the way that it is able to cure diseases that we before were unable to cure especially sma and things like blindness that is truly amazing that we are able to be able to try to tackle these issues in some people i think the issue definitely going down the road is going to be accessibility and ethics, of course. But we won't know until later down the road when that comes up again. I just, I don't really know what to expect until I guess we know more. So thank you guys so much for watching my video, checking me out, and I guess kind of caring what I had to say about. I definitely babbled a lot and even though I organized this video as much as I thought I did, editing me is going to hate me. So thank you guys so much for checking out my video and I do really want to know is what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this is okay that people are doing this to themselves at home? Do you think that this is okay that there's such a thing as designer babies or gene therapy in general? Like gene therapy is amazing but biohacking is that crossing a line? Should this be allowed? Should people be allowed to experiment on themselves? Thank you guys so much for checking me out watching my video and feel free to subscribe especially if you want to see more content either like this or any of the other videos I do. I do a lot of DIYs. I talk astrology. I do a whole bunch of basically whatever I feel like. So if you're interested in seeing what I like to entertain myself with, because that's clearly what this channel is at this point, is just me entertaining myself, definitely subscribe and hit that bell to get those notifications when I upload. Follow me on Instagram at more than a handful. And I now have a Twitter and I'll put it here because it's not spelled right because it's too many letters. So sorry, but here you go. So let me know what you want to think. And if you have any other like in-depth videos you want to see a video on, let me know. Any in-depth topics you want to see a video on, let me know. 
I really enjoyed this and I don't know if it's going to come out the way I wanted, but hopefully. So, all right. And I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.